Roger. We're starting to get a television picture now from the spacecraft. We're starting to get a picture now. Hello, 12 Houston. Uh, we're starting to get a picture now. Uh, 12 Houston, for information, you should be crossing uh, 60 degrees east at 840208. We agree. Okay, uh, we're getting the uh, the lunar surface. Uh, it appears that we can see the uh, subsolar point, or could at one time there. We can see numerous small uh, light-colored craters. Speaking. Okay, I'm going to hand it over to Dick. He's got uh, Langerness out the window. Okay, very good. Dick's got the camera, he's pointing it over towards Langerness now. This Batavius over here is a beautiful thing. Whenever you get finished, I'll see if I can shoot it. Okay, he's got some high peaks in the middle. What happened to the binocular? appear to be green to brown. Uh, can you describe the colors in the scene that you're seeing there now? That'll do for now. The uh, mountain that's sort of uh, mountains that are sort of in the center of Langerness, I'm looking at through the binocular, and uh, apparently they look very smooth with the naked eye, but by looking through the binocular, I can pick up these black dots. They're very black, and I, they're obviously very large boulders that are sitting around on them. Uh, Rog, uh, the picture on the TV screen of okay. that central peak, it looked at kind of, it appeared to be yeah, rather rounded. Yeah, it appears to be rounded, but it's got a lot of big boulders uh, sitting on it. I'll uh, hand the camera over to Al now. He's got some stuff up his window. Okay. Boop, that's one for the geologist. Uh, materials out his window he wants to shine up down on. I see that stuff. thing myself. Of course, there's 
several places that are very, very white. And I'll point the camera at one of them now. It's a small crater, and it's uh, very symmetrical. It just looks like a cone with a flat bottom. Right. You can see that. Okay, it's going out the top of the screen. Can you move up and pick it up just a little? There, that's good. There you go. I understand that the... Okay, I understand that this uh, crater is, uh, appears to be white down inside, Al. Is that right? Well, it's uh, pretty bright. It's uh, white and then it's got some uh, radial uh, streaks of a more darker material. It's moving down, looks, or at least uh, runs from the rim down to the... Uh, center down to the flat bottom. I think you can see those on the TV. Let me show you a real bright crater that's more towards the horizon, but uh, it's one of the very, very bright ones. Can you see that? I'll try to put it right in the center. Okay, I see one that's just a little bit above the edge Hard of the window know. there. Right, another interesting thing is uh, this white or great white uh, moon, it contrasts very starkly with the black sky, just like everyone's reported. And maybe even so on the TV down there, but the black is about as black as you've ever seen in your life. It's just doesn't have any, uh, any hues or anything to it. It's just solid, straight, dull black. And then the moon is just sort of very light, concrete color. In fact, if I wanted to look at something that I thought was about the same color as the moon, I'd go out and look at my driveway. Okay, uh, well, there then. is uh, even Earth orbit, even Earth orbit at night or or the daytime. Uh, the sky was never as black as it is here. This is the blackest black I ever saw. It. Al described it as dull, and it doesn't even seem like a. A dull black, when you look at it on the horizon, to me, is like an ebony black. It's just as cold black as I've ever seen. Okay, I'm going to pass the TV over to Dick now. Show you, there's a very interesting crater that uh, Dick's got down there. There's another one that I'm looking into. The first one I see with the fractures at the bottom of it that we've flown right directly over. And uh, there's a fracture pattern that runs right through the middle of the crater, including the rim of it, uh, perpendicular to it, crosses all the way across the crater. So it gives me the feeling that, that the uh, fracture pattern, that particular uh, fracture, doesn't have anything to do with the crater. Right. Okay, what are we looking at there now, 12? Uh, is that the bottom of a crater or a Mori area? Uh, it's the bottom of a, uh, a crater. It's a large Mori area, actually, uh, Paul. And in the crater, there are two, we're in the Mori, there are two brand new craters that have uh, fairly detailed gray patterns going out from them. They're quite stark. Uh, quite uh, startling when you see them because they are perfect radio patterns from two of them right next to each other. It is pretty interesting. As a matter of fact, that one ray pattern looks like it's only one direction. Now look that way to you today. Yeah, it looks like it's coming towards us. Yeah, it works. It's a double ray pattern and just a single one. Roger, 12. over. 
for the sea of fertility now, and it is a little bit darker than uh, the Terra that we've been over, but not so much. It's more of a, uh, just a slightly darker gray. Buzz, 12. Looks like the beach sand down at Galveston, whatever it's wet. Okay, we had a team of geologists checking your driveway. We'll send them to Galveston now. <laughs> okay. down into a real fresh impact crater in the Sea of Fertility, and with the binocular I can see some pretty large boulders, so I guess as high as we are, if I can see those boulders, they must be pretty darn big. Roger. Now we can see that crater in the lower left part of the screen right now. Uh, 
uh, earth ground running down from the ridge line. They're running perpendicular to it, more or less. Roger. There, we're looking at people look over to your side real far over there. <laughs> and then and see uh, the Sea of Serenity and some of those craters over in there. They ought to be uh, pretty good contrast with that dark bar. Is there any over there? There are plenty of them. Yeah, that, uh, that might be interesting. Hey, there's some pretty good uh, cracks over there. We're going to change windows here. There's some uh, beautiful rills over in uh, the other side. Dark side. the view we can see now, there appears to be a, a dark line running from the lower left up toward the top center. Uh, can you make anything out of that? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to show you. Okay, we're... Uh, Looks we're... like uh, some... Uh, per... Looks like some fairly deep uh, rills and droppings over there, particularly uh, uh, the ones that you uh, ask about. They're very, very deep. There's a nice wide one over there, Pete. Can you see it? Over by that fresh uh, impact uh, raised rim. Yeah, I'll put it over there with Dick. Well, you sit in that uh, scene you just shifted from. There appeared to be two uh, parallel uh, rills. Uh, you confirm that? <laughs> that, that? That's correct. As a matter of fact, in looking at it, there are two parallel rills, and then they actually pick up, well, not quite a third one. It's like one ends on one side, the middle one goes all the way through, and then one picks up on the right-hand side. Well, I understand. The picture oh, is two parallel grommets in this seat. Also, also along that, that rill, uh, Uh, one of the last things we saw at, used, uh, at the Cape when we talked to the geologist was the uh, little experiment that the guy did blowing uh, air through the sand, gases. And sure enough, uh, I've got some examples of that right here in, the, in those uh, trench-like structures. There's some crater chains running through them and alongside them, just, just like... Uh, yeah, we talked about. We've got some examples. There's a big giant up here. He's blowing sand all over the place. Okay, understand. Now we could see uh, just a minute ago a uh, a furrow or a trench coming from the lower left side of the screen up toward the center and kind of ending in a in a string of rather poorly defined craters. Hey. Roger, that's one over here. It's actually a double double gravel. It's uh, not off center. Two of them running parallel to each other. Hey, hey, Dick, you see the double craters right there? Do you see the grobbins run alongside them? And do you see a little string? It looks like a string of craters. Two sets of them. Can you give them that on the TV? I might get it out of this window. Wait a minute. Let me try the center one. And while you're setting up, how uh, how does the view out your windows now? Here. Pretty much the same, Houston. Uh, window number five is a good one. Window number four is <coughs> four. Window number three, which is the hatch window, is uh, it's not it's bad. It, it's still the same condition it was in launch. All of them are. But because we got a bright background instead of the uh, dark background we had before, the uh, marks on them aren't quite as noticeable. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting number very one good the pictures back here. Far the worst wind at number two. Okay, this is up north. Gonna see it as a rail here with a whole bunch of uh, looks like vent holes running along uh, these rails. Can you see those from the ground, Paul? That's a firm. Uh, we could see them before. Uh, you just moved off of uh, what appears to be a rail, moving to the right now. And uh, we could see this ring of metal on before. your side over there, Dick. Yeah, this is the. Uh, there's several. Uh, there's a whole bunch of areas in here. Just looking out the window generally, that give you the feeling that, uh, as uh, we've talked about with the geologists, that some of this is volcanic action in here. Okay, now we can see a crater just to the left of the screen there that uh, rather poorly defined and there appears to be a good sized uh, rail or fracture running across the floor. Hey, we got this straight wall coming up on this side. Used to when it gets a little bit closer, I'll show it to you. It's a beautiful straight line. Very good. Also, we got a couple of... Here, let me blow that thing. Take a minute. Okay. Here's 
some of those mountains we talked about earlier that look like from a distance like little clouds over the bar. You can see how bright they are relative to the barry surface. And maybe even on the TV, they look like uh, puffy clouds. However, uh, they're not. They look like pretty hard rock down there. Right, I understand they are not clouds. Can you open your F-stop, Benny, uh, get in this dim light? That'll help it. We'll try it. Right at the Terminator. See, 
if I can run up there uh, for you. Yeah, it's coming in good, Al. Take a look at uh, down in that crater, the number of other small craters. Roger, right, see him. That's fantastic. Let me, uh, as soon as you look at that, I'll show you the horizon. And near the terminator on the horizon, just to the horizon, you can easily see the curvature of the moon, and you can also see uh, the stark contrast between the horizon and the bright mountains and the, the dark crater. I'll move it over there now. There's the straight wall again. Hey, Paul, all I can say it's another fighter pilot's life. Hours and hours. Roger. How's that look, Houston? That's looking good, Al. That crater's a beauty out there. The rim is uh, illuminated by the low sun, while down inside the crater it's dark. And you can see the ray patterns from here, and you can see the Murray surface. It almost looks like somebody took a, some cake icing and uh, spread it with a big knife, laid it all around out there, and then somebody shot some BBs in it. It really is beautiful. It's got that layering all over it.